We love a good bookish podcast, but when it comes to fans creating podcasts about books, what are the legal ramifications of this? Are they allowed to create a podcast all about one book? Are they allowed to create podcasts about a bunch of different books? And is there one that's going to be more legally protected than the other? Let's talk to everybody's favorite IP and entertainment lawyer, Tony, to find out more. My name is Tony Oyakasas. I'm an adjunct professor of entertainment law and IP at New York Law School. I have an Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok account called The IP Professor that's dedicated to all things intellectual property. Tony, we're starting to see more and more bookish podcasts pop up in the world, and a lot of these are dedicated to a specific book or a specific book series. So from a legal perspective, can fans create a podcast dedicated around one specific book or series? So I would probably lean towards saying that it might be better to do it on, you know, the uh, like a p- per podcast episode on the entirety of a book rather than doing it on chapter by chapter basis. And I think the reason is, well, let, let's start from this, this onset. We've talked about before how reading podcast, reading aloud, either by way of a YouTube video or a podcast or anything else, reading aloud the actual words of a book chapter to chapter is going to pose a red flag, is going to pose the risk of getting a copyright infringement claim from the copyright owner. Now, this is putting aside books that are in the public domain. You could read, you could have a whole reading of A.A. Milne's Winnie the Pooh because it is in the public domain. That's fine. But books like, you know, uh, 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 Catcher in the Rye, those are protected under copyright, or The Hunger Games, or Harry Potter, those are actively protected under copyright. Reading those books aloud chapter to chapter are going to pose the risk of getting some type of claim from the publisher saying that you're violating their public performance right because you're reading the books aloud and you didn't get a license to do that. And, you know, they're going to tell you to take it down in some way. Now, that said, I'm bringing this up because if you were to do a podcast series where it's on a chapter to chapter basis, it might be okay. And I'm operative for it. There is might contingent on how strong the fair use argument is. And we've talked about fair use before. Fair use operates as a defense to copyright infringement, so long as you're using someone else's work for criticism, commentary, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. And, you know, clearly here, if you're doing a podcast series where you are talking about the characters of the book, the plot line, the motifs, the MacGuffins, any sort of spin on the book, anything that is worthy of commentary that that is satisfied right then and there under that first aspect of the fair use doctrine. Now, there is a four factor test that is used in analyzing fair use. One factor is not dispositive of the other. And furthermore, you don't need to satisfy all four factors. One factor could be enough to move the needle entirely in favor of fair use. But it is all going to boil down to what exactly is the commentary or the criticism that you're providing? And furthermore, have you taken the original work and transformed it in such a way that you have provided new expression, meaning, or message? That is very integral to the fair use discussion to the point that that has been the most highly contested point in the mo- in two out of the uh, actually, no, two most recent uh, copyright infringement claims in the Supreme Court related to fair use. Uh, the Campbell versus A. Cuffrose music case that happened in 94, and most recently, the Andy Warhol Foundation for the Arts case that just went down this past term in the Supreme Court. So very, very evidently, you know, the transformative fair use discussion is going to be a very relevant point uh, to the analysis of how you're how you're constructing your podcast episodes. Obviously, you get into the nature of the copyrighted work, which is alluding to, you know, what what kind of copyrighted work is at play here. Um, also, the amount and substantiality of the portion used in related to in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole. That's a third prong. That gets to how much of the original copyrighted work are you providing emphasis on? Because if you're doing, if you're like, you know, reading significant segments of the book that could be enough to move to go against you in the fair use analysis and probably the most important thing is the market harm prong is your coverage of the the book or the chapter more specifically going to be enough to cause some type of adverse effect to the origin copyright holder is it going to basically tell people hey i don't re- need to read the book anymore because i just listened to this podcast and you know it gave me the commentary that i needed and that's it that's actually the central argument even that's being shared uh, right now in the Southern District related to a lot of the open AI lawsuits that are being brought by authors. They're saying that, you know, when you go to open AI or chat GPT and you ask it, tell me that about this book, they're giving the whole synopsis and it's incentivizing people to not go to the bookstore, spend 20 bucks on a book, and there's no royalty for the author when it's all said and done. So 
all that to say, I think that that's where the fair use argument is going to move adversely against a, a podcast owner. Um, and, and again, I think this is where it's really going to be very tricky and fact specific. I can't really give like a cookie cutter model. And I think that this is all the more important for you to, uh, or all the more reason for you and how much more important it is for you to go speak to a lawyer for that specific guidance. What I would say, and this is obviously unsolicited legal advice, but I would say that it probably would be better to do an entire episode where you're providing a much more generalized synopsis and analysis about a book. Because if you're doing that, at the bare minimum, you're providing a much more broad bird's eye view commentary about the book. You're not doing such a micro analysis of each chapter. And I think that doing something like that makes you a little bit more susceptible to getting a copper infringement claim versus a whole episode about your favorite book, the characters that you like, what you loved, what you didn't love from a theme perspective. All of that from a very broad perspective is something that I think is viewed more favorably in the eyes of the fair use doctrine. So needless to say, every podcast is different. Every coverage of how a podcast creator does a, you know their coverage of a book, that's going to be different. But if you have some type of game plan, if you have a blueprint in place, speaking to a lawyer for guidance and creating that roadmap for you may be the best way to navigate how the fair use doctrine will apply in that context. And I'll throw this out there. If you are trying to create a podcast on a specific book or series instead of like an episode per book that you like, go to the copyright holder and let them know what you're up to. Exactly. Let them know what you're looking for because perhaps you can create a collaboration with them. You might be able to get the author on. You might be able to get other guests on. You might have specific things that you can and cannot do. They might even be able to give you spoilers and extras and secrets and really play into what you are doing if you bring them into the collaborative process with this. So checking with them is always going to be a really important thing for you to do. But you also want to take into consideration what you are naming your podcast. So Tony, when it comes to the names of the podcast, can they do things specifically connected to the books, to the titles of the books, to the title of the series, or do we have to go more broad? Uh, it's going to really depend on a variety of factors, but I'm going to lean towards saying that it probably could be problematic. You know, to your point earlier about reaching out to the copyright owner and asking for collaboration, I think that that is a fantastic idea. And that could even give uh, give you the opportunity once you're collaborating with the, that author to be able to use the book's name in your title. Because if you did it without the participation of the author, it's going to give the average listener the impression that the author endorsed this podcast or that they're involved in this podcast in some way. And, you know, there are scenarios where a lot of authors and publisher publishing houses register the name of a book title as a trademark in the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. And obviously trademarks deal with source identification of goods or services, could be and services even. But needless to say, that's something that is commonly done, even if there wasn't a registration, a trademark registration for a book title, the fact that there could be that possibility of consumer confusion should lead people to believe that if that is even a thought, a remote thought in their head, they should just avoid it at all costs. So, you know, let's say you want to make a Hunger Games book uh, or a book podcast talking about Hunger Games, calling it the, uh, the Hunger Games podcast is obviously going to be problematic. I would even go as far as say the unofficial Hunger Games podcast could still be problematic because even the qualifier of unofficial is still, you know, not negating the fact that you're using the name of the book that surely is registered as a trademark in a variety of different classes of goods and services. So maybe coming up with like something crafty, like, you know, uh, you know, Katniss's Corner or, you know, uh, that's a great idea for someone out there <laughs> doing a Hunger Games podcast um, or, you know, let the pods, let the pod begin or, you know, something like that. Anything crafty or punny might be the getaway from oh, making yourself susceptible to some type of trademark claim. I think if you do it that way, it's a much safer route than just going for the trademark title or the, the title as the, as the uh, title of the podcast, because that could pose a broader trademark issue. And as always, if you are going to jump into the world of podcasting and it's connected to the book world, something that you do not own the copyright to, 
get yourself a lawyer, ask the questions, and make sure you are legally protected before you jump in and get yourself in legal trouble. If you've got questions on this, now is a great time to drop those for Tony. He's coming back for upcoming episodes. And as always, you can reach out to Tony on his social media. Tony, where can everybody find you? You can find me on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok at The IP Professor. And you can check out my entertainment law podcast called End Scene with new episodes dropping every Friday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Drop your questions down below and let us know when it comes to discussing books, what is your favorite type of discussion? What do you want to hear? Who do you want to hear from? What types of podcasts and live streams and interviews and things related to books do you like to consume? Let us know in the comments down below and follow along for daily episodes, helping you navigate the world of your reading and your publishing journey to make this your most fun and most profitable year ever with the least amount of stress and overwhelm. We'll see you in the upcoming episodes.